Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to install Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform 4.6. I believe it's 4.6.1 on a VMware uh, cluster. This version is 6.7 update 3 and uh, we're going to be using the UPI or the user provisioned uh, installation procedures uh, for this deployment. I have already pulled up my um, what you're looking at here is my um, dashboard for the very small cluster that I have. I've only got uh, three nodes in it. Um, and I pulled up a uh, installation config file here so we can review this. And um, what you're going to want to do before you get your install is you want to make sure you download the tools. I've already got all these um, from previous demos, but uh, you want to make sure you go into cloud.redhat.com, log in with your subscription, go to cluster manager, create cluster, and then Red Hat Container Platform. And it, we're just getting the tools. You can really pick anything, but let's just go here to VMware. Uh, the OpenShift installer runs on Mac or Linux. Um, I'm on a Mac, so I pulled that down. You want to grab your pull secret. Um, this uh, authorizes your credentials to pull the packages down. There's also the command line interface, um, which runs on Linux, Mac, and Windows. This is the OC and the kubectl commands. Um, you want to download those. And then, of course, because we're cloning images, uh, we're going to grab the Red Hat Core OS uh, OVA for VMware. And I've already downloaded that as well. Also, uh, for those wanting to follow along or play the home game, uh, go to the documentation 4.6. I'll leave all these links in the description below. And we can go to install uh, VMware or vSphere rather, and then you want to find the user provision infrastructure. So select that. Uh, there is two methods of installing VMware. Uh, I think ever since 4.5 came out, you could do an IPI or fully automated install and then this uh, UPI install, which is uh, a little bit more manual, but um, generally found in enterprises that have a little bit more control over uh, load balancers, DNS, and, and uh, network configurations. So uh, we're going to be using UPI in this case. Uh, there are some prerequisites. Uh, we'll briefly slide through those. Uh, the big thing is the hypervisor needs to be 6.5 or above. Again, I'm on 6.7 update 3. There are some network requirements. Um, there's also, uh, they've got minimum sizing here. We'll talk about the sizes that I'm going to use in my cluster later on. I do have a, um, a uh, private cert CA that I use in my lab. I'll be loading that. Um, for the network requirements, it does show the ports that are necessary. Uh, the big thing is um, externally to the cluster. Again, this is a private lab, so the... Um, uh, IP address uh, for the cluster will be like a 172.16 network, so private um, uh, network class B. And I'm only allowing port uh, 6443 into the clusters uh, through a load balancer configuration. I'm using HA proxy. And uh, I'm uh, so that's targeting the manager node, 6443 is. And then uh, I have port 443 and port 80 uh, targeting the worker nodes uh, for apps. Uh, or wildcard.apps.domain.com. Um, uh, but definitely flip through here. Here's a couple of ports I have available. Again, this is uh, especially for the install. Uh, remotely, I've only got 6443 enabled. Uh, then here's the ports for the workers. We want to make sure those are set up for your load balancers. Uh, VMware uses uh, MAC address assignment blocks, so you want to make sure that your MACs uh, fall into the appropriate ranges and are reserved so the uh, machines will come up they will uh, look for their MAC address and then uh, bind to a uh, bind to their IP address. Um, so we want to make sure we have IP and MAC resolution. I've already, I'll show you that in a second, but I've already got that configured as well. There are some DNS requirements. We need to make sure that our DNS is set up for API dot uh, cluster name dot uh, your domain like domain dot com and uh, API uh, internal. This also needs to be set up, and then of course the wildcard. Uh, so Externally to the cluster, we want to make sure we get to API. Internally to the cluster, we need to make sure we get to API and API int. And then uh, externally to the cluster, make sure we can resolve wildcard. If you uh, are a enterprise that doesn't allow wildcards, uh, they uh, I'll provide a script to pull the um, uh, default uh, domains uh, at the end of this uh, demo and in the description, perhaps. Uh, so you can run that and it'll show you what the, um, the manually configured default uh, app um, uh, 
addresses are, so you can just manually plug those in to DNS and not worry about the wildcard. Uh, I already have a SSH key uh, loaded uh, in my Mac, so I'll be using that one. And then, uh, yeah, we have the OpenShift installer, OpenShift CA, those are all loaded as well. For the install config file, uh, let's jump to that. It's it's You can use the uh, OpenShift-install uh, create install config, and it'll walk you through some uh, menu options. However, uh, when you select vSphere, it's going to assume that you're doing IPI. So there's going to be some extra fields here. Um, one of those fields is publish. It'll say publish external. Um, and there'll also be a, uh, another another network. We want to make sure we don't we don't grab that. So essentially what we're doing is we're saying, well, I, I can ignore all the network configurations because everything's manual for me, right? So I don't need to worry about um, uh, a separate uh, CIDR for the machine networks because all those machines are uh, manually provisioned on my network. Um, I don't need a, uh, I don't need to publish endpoints because the endpoints are already going to be a part of this. Do, do, do. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'll go over my install config in a second. So just get that ready. Uh, so definitely take a moment and kind of browse through this document uh, and then you can follow along here. I think we're really ready. So let's, uh, I think I covered the this early setup. So let's look at the install config file. So this is uh, slightly modified for, uh, for my domain. And uh, so my base domain is redcloud.land. Uh, we're selecting uh, zero workers for VMware for uh, because it's UPI. I'll manually add those workers later. Um, three master nodes, uh, all forms of Kubernetes because they use a RAF consensus group, uh, require three masters to form a cluster. So we need at least two surviving masters to elect a leader. It is a requirement. Uh, the cluster name is OpenShift. This is the pod network. This is the service network. Uh, these are default. Um, so I'm selecting those, leaving those alone. Um, the network type uh, is typically OpenShift uh, SDN. Um, you can also opt for this OVN Kubernetes. Um, I'm doing OVN Kubernetes just because I have another uh, project that I want to uh, test out. So I'm going ahead and switching to OVN Kubernetes. Now, if you have uh, OpenShift SDN here, and then later on you want to do a you know, something that requires or you want to just play around with OVN Kubernetes, you can, and I have before, switch network types from OpenShift SDN to OVN Kubernetes. It's not a big deal. So uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's a little time consuming, obviously, and everything gets re-IP'd, but uh, essentially um, it's it's not that difficult to switch between, uh, between the two and then back again. Uh, and I, I have done that previously. All right. Um, Let's see, so uh, VMware, so I'm picking up my vCenter here. Uh, I have a folder, let's jump back into this, uh, that I've created, uh, Red Cloud VLAN, this is where, or sorry, Red Cloud LAN, this is where all my machines, uh, VMs are gonna go and my, um, uh, my uh, Red Hat Core OS uh, operating system, that'll go in there as well for cloning. Uh, the username, uh, password, put the password in uh, quotes and put the folder in quotes uh, as well. Data center is just data center. Um, I think I didn't name it anything. So it's it's fine. So it's just, I can't remember where I put it, but and so the data center is just data center. And then um, uh, default data store is vSAN. So I've got uh, just a couple of data stores here. Uh, I've got some NVMe. Uh, so we'll be pinning, or I'll be pinning, when I do the install, I'm going to actually pin my um, manager nodes to these NVMe drives, uh, but the default data store is going to be the vSAN uh, data store. Uh, FIPS false. Uh, in the install config that I've uh, already uh, got set up, I already put in my pull secret and my SSH key. And again, I uh, put in my, you, you don't need to do this, but if you want to install a private CA, um, again, I'm doing that. So I've added the private CA to, uh, to my uh, install config as well. And then so um, my DHCP server has these uh, res reservations. So for a bootstrap node, here's the MAC address that it's going to um, grab its IP for. And then of course all the masters and then the worker nodes. So this, when the nodes come up, they're gonna try to get their IPs. They're gonna do a, um, they're gonna compare them. They're gonna request an IP address from the, from the DHCP server. The DHCP server will match the MAC address and then give them the IP for that MAC.
All right, I hope that all that made sense. Okay, so I'm gonna shrink this window. Let's make this one a little bit bigger. Whoa, that's a little too big. All right, and uh, I think we're really ready to go. So here I've got my directory. I'm gonna be installing my files in. You can see this um, uh, Red Hat Core OS OVA is ready. So the one thing I need to do is go ahead and get that uploaded. So we'll just um, upload that some way. Let's see here. Deploy OVA template uh, from a local file, browse. And grab that one. Next. It's uh, fine using this. That's fine too. Do, do, do. All right. And I'm going to put that on the vSAN data store. Next. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, with our template deployed, we can uh, go ahead and uh, well, let's go ahead and get the config started. So we'll do OpenShift uh, install, create uh, manifest directory red cloud. Do do do. All right, so now if we go into red cloud. <clears throat> we'll see the manifest directory and the OpenShift uh, subdirectory. So let's go into the OpenShift directory first. And here we've got um, the uh, master machine sets. Uh, we're gonna delete these uh, because again, we're doing everything manually here. So we'll uh, remove F YAML, all of those. We also have a um, a zero uh, machine set. I'm actually gonna copy this file out of here, uh, or move it rather, uh, because I can use it to create a worker machine set in the future uh, for scaling nodes. So let's go ahead and grab that. So we'll move that and we'll put that to, uh, two directories back. Okay. Yep, all right, that looks right. Uh, okay, so let's go into the manifest directory let me clear my screen here. All right, and um, so we don't want the master nodes to be schedulable, so we're gonna have to um, edit that as well. So uh, let's go into this cluster scheduler2 config uh, here. So we'll VI that. And you can see where it says uh, masters are schedulable. This is because in our config we said zero workers. So we wanna make sure that we change true to false uh, because we will be installing uh, worker nodes. And then what we don't want is we don't want the uh, worker jobs to start spinning up on the, on the manager nodes. Now, if that does happen, um, you can come back in and uh, patch the scheduler so that it's uh, false, um, but that may then require you to reboot um, the nodes to make sure that everything gets redistributed appropriately. So it's best to do it right now. Uh, it is in the documentation to, to knock that out as well. Uh, so now we really just need to start building our nodes. Actually, I'm wrong uh, because now I need to create the ignition file. So we'll say OpenShift install, create ignition configs, directory equals red cloud. And yes, we're going to do my key, wait, should have already done that. Oh, I'm in the right cloud directory. Clear. Let's do that again. It was trying to create the um, config again because I wasn't in um, this directory. So it was gonna 
target a new directory. Okay, so now we shouldn't have any of those menu options. I knew that looked weird. Okay, there we go. All right, so now if we go back into Red Cloud, we'll see um, this uh, bootstrap ignition file. We're going to use this to bring up the bootstrap and then uh, master, uh, the master ignition file and the worker ignition file needs to be uh, encoded. Now on Mac, we're, it's a little different on a Mac. So we'll do uh, base uh, 64 input uh, master ignition and then we'll output output uh, master 64 and if we cat master 64 we'll see it's just one long string which is right and then uh, we'll do base uh, 64 input worker output worker 64 all right uh, the only other thing we're going to need is an append file. So when you um, when you are, are doing a UPI install on VMware, I'm going to need to serve up the bootstrap ignition file. Um, this one, whoops, this one. And it's actually too big um, to put the content of that file in, um, in the VM when you clone it. So we're going to use an append file to uh, to encode to actually point to a web server that will serve this file serve this file up All right so um, let's create that essentially it looks like this and then I'm going to put in the source of my uh, web server right here and save it. It would be like HTTPS or HTTP rather. Um, I can't remember what it is. Let's see, one, two, one, no, one seven two dot one six dot zero dot nine bootstrap. Where'd you get? I think that's right. We'll check it. That nine, okay. So we will copy this into that directory or into that server. Say temp. I'm going to jump on it. Clear this. All right, so we've got our bootstrap ignition file here. And let's take a look at it. And you can see that the permissions are 640. And that's not going to work. We need at least 644. There we go. Okay, so now we are now we are ready. All right, so now we just need to start cloning our machines over here, and then we're going to assign uh, those MAC addresses uh, after we clone them. Okay, so let's uh, start cloning here. We'll say clone uh, to virtual machine. Give it its name, uh, master zero. I'm going to put it in this folder. I'm pinning it to this node. And we're going to say NVMe2. Okay. And here we want to customize the machine's hardware. Uh, for my managers, uh, the master nodes, they're going to be running a lot. Um, typically, the, uh, the, the um, uh, recommendation is like four, ZPU, four CPUs, <clears throat> 16 gig of memory. Uh, I think that's actually going to be fine for my master nodes. So we're going to do uh, 4 and 16 here. 
Um, we could also do like eight and 24, again, really depending on how much work your uh, master nodes are gonna be doing. Uh, the majority of the work will be on the worker nodes. Uh, so I think four 16 is probably fine. Uh, 120 gig for the uh, drives. Uh, looks like it is gonna be thin provisioning, so that's great. Um, the entire network is gonna be on this uh, Net170, uh, but then we have some uh, options that we need to configure here. Now, I'm, as part of the cloning process, I'm not going to modify uh, the MAC addresses yet. Uh, I'm not gonna boot the machines up right away. So once the clone is complete, then we'll go in and edit them and then add MAC addresses. <clears throat> I've noticed that VMware would throw some sort of uh, error if I Mac, uh, put in the MAC assignment now, saved it, built another one, even though I modified it to a different MAC address, I've seen some errors pop up before. So it's just my practice. I'm gonna do the clone, then go back in, edit it, and add the MAC address assignments. Okay, so now we're gonna do the VMware options. And go to advanced, scroll down the bottom to edit configuration. We have three items to add here. Um, one of the first items is to uh, make sure that um, the disk partition doesn't change essentially. So we're gonna say uh, enable UUID, true. And then uh, our encoding is base64. So again, this is all in documentation as well. Um, so we're encoding there, base64. And then um, the hash that we used or the encoding that we did on the master file, we'll put in here. Um, so we can go to, let me pull this up and cat master 64 and we want to grab all this to there copy that paste it in right here do do that looks good and next and next and next so it's going to build this master node <clears throat> and once that's done uh, we should see all the information here pop up so once it's finished then we will uh, clone this one into two other masters uh, because it already has all the configuration information. We're just gonna change the name and save it and then we should be good. And then we'll uh, do the workers and then finally we'll do that bootstrap node and then uh, start booting everything up. All right, so let's grab this master and we'll just clone uh, to a VM and we'll say master one and same location. And now we're going to pin it to the second node here. Then provisioning. Uh, we're going to do that. Keep the same source. That's right. Um, we don't need to modify the hardware. So next, next, next. And then we will select here. I want to wait for it to pop up. All right. And then we will clone. Oops. We will clone it again. So clone the virtual machine. Master two, and put it in the same place. Pin it to the other node. Okay, so do the uh, worker nodes. Say clone virtual machine worker zero. And pick our folder and drop it on there. Uh, VSAN's fine. Customize the hardware. And here we'll do uh, 824. And I think that's it. All right, so then we have our advanced options. Uh, same as for the master. Add, add, add. And then uh, we have our um, enable the disk UUID, copy that over here. I'm just pulling it from off screen, the documentation. And that is true. And then our ignition encoding, copy, paste, and that's base 64. And then finally, our uh, encoded worker data, copy, Paste. Let's come here, clear, and we'll cat worker 64, and we'll grab that, copy, paste, okay, next, next, next. <clears throat>
Okay, so again, uh, same as the other one, there's no other real definitive information um, that sets all these apart. So I'm just going to clone this as well. So clone that worker to virtual machine. We'll call it worker one here next. And we'll put it on there next. And then B stands fine next, 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 next. Well, I just noticed uh, that I forgot to change my hard disk size. So let's uh, let's take care of that. All right. So I need to edit the settings. I'll go to 120 gig here. Okay. There we go. And I'll edit the settings there. 120 gig here. There we go. Okay. And then these should all be 120. Yep. All right. And we'll clone that. A virtual machine. Worker 2. I pin that to the last node. B sands fine. Next, next, next. Okay, so here uh, we created that append ignition file and now we need to encode that one as well. So we'll do uh, base 64. Again, it's a little different on a Mac than it is on Linux. And let's do that. Uh, output append bootstrap 64. All right, and then uh, let's grab this and we'll clone it into the bootstrap. So we'll say uh, clone to virtual machine, bootstrap, put it in that folder, next. Doesn't really matter, I'll drop it on that one. Uh, VSAN's fine. Uh, customize virtual machine. Uh, I'm not worried about any of this. Um, change that to 24. It needs a minimum of 16 gig for the bootstrap server. Uh, but I'm just going to turn it to 24 just to just to make sure I don't break anything. Uh, advanced. One, two, three, and then we will grab that uh, those entries. Paste. True. Encoding. Base 64. The data. Copy, paste, and here we'll grab that cat append 64. Again, all this is doing is pointing to where it can download its uh, bootstrap ignition file. That's it. Next, finish. Okay, now while we're at that and we're ready, almost ready to boot up, let's go ahead and set these MAC addresses. So I'm going to go to the master node, edit the settings. And then under network adapter, change this to manual. And then I see this is master zero. So let's grab that smack assignment. Copy, paste, okay. And master one, edit, network adapter, manual. And we'll do this one, copy, paste. Okay, and master two, edit settings, grab that, network adapter, manual, paste, okay, and the worker node, edit settings, copy, manual, paste, Okay, and worker one. Copy. Network adapter, MAC address settings, manual, paste, okay. Edit settings, describe worker two. Copy. 
manual paste. Okay. And then our bootstrap node, which should be configured now. Go here. Edit settings. Network adapter. Manual. Okay. Great. All right. So those are all set up. Now we just need to start booting things up. So what we will do is we will start with the bootstrap node. Once the and we'll verify that the bootstrap is up and running. Let me pull this terminal up. Oops. Clear. Because uh, it's really important that um, this one comes up and is healthy uh, before we boot anything uh, else up. Because once they load their ignition file, you can't go back. All right, so let's uh, power that on. <clears throat> and we'll launch the remote console. So it's connecting. And what we're looking for here is when it boots up, we want to make sure that it fetches its IP address, which I believe this one should be 13. Well, so it got the file. So this is 172.16. So it got the uh, ignition file. Oops, look at that. I got my network wrong. It's supposed to be a dot one. And that's what I mean. So we gotta check those out. Okay. So let's uh let's cancel this guy. And we have to redo power off. We have to redo that append file to have the appropriate uh, IP address. I thought it was 172.16.0.9 and it's a 1.9. So no big deal. Uh, let's get out of there, get out of there. VI append ignition. All right, and it didn't actually pull the bootstrap file. new data, add it to our bootstrap machine, edit, mm -hmm, there it is, okay, okay, all right, clear here, all right, so that should, uh, I should solve that and we will boot this back up. And jump into the console. And what we're looking for is for it to fetch that file and get its IP address as well. I think it scrolled by too fast already. Yeah, it's booting up, okay. Yep, so our node is IP'd correctly and it's got its name, it's kind of a dead giveaway that it actually got its, uh, its name from its Mac assignment. All right, so let's clear this and we will SSH into that bootstrap node as the core user, 172.16.0.9. Uh, 
1.1.13. And let's run this journal command just to check the health. All right, it's going to take a few minutes for the packages to download. Uh, and then we should start seeing some uh, some things happen here. Okay, it's definitely downloading all the packages, so we've made a good connection. Um, so it's going to take a few minutes for my cluster to pull all these packages down. And uh, once, uh, well, yeah. So once it's uh, finished pulling all these packages, then I'm going to boot up the master nodes. So I'm going to wait for this to, to complete before I boot the masters up. Okay, looks like the master or the bootstrap nodes ready. I'll go ahead and close that, and we'll start booting up the masters here. Uh, start, 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 and we will. I did hit start on that one, right? Start. Okay. So we can take a look at this. Now there is a, uh, I may have mentioned, I do have a HA proxy uh, set up. So I have, um, <clears throat> I have the, the name resolution DNS uh, already configured, HA proxy already configured. So uh, when these nodes come up, once the Bootstrap server is ready, they're going to start um, pairing up with the uh, Bootstrap uh, server so it can get all of its final configuration information. And we won't necessarily see that happen from the manager's point of view, um, but uh, I have noticed before that. Uh, It'll go through this little process, and uh, once you see these, you know, get errors, just looking for this. Uh, once it becomes available on the Bootstrap, uh, when the service is running for two, port two two six two three, um, then the manager nodes uh, or master nodes will uh, get connected and start loading, and you'll see it like flip over to uh, where it's uh, the login screen for its host name and IP address, and that pretty much uh, tells us that the masters are connected. I'm going to get out of here and shrink this a little bit. Let's bring up master zero. Bring up master one. And bring up master two. And we'll just wait for these two. That's zero, one, and two. <clears throat> so I noticed because um, it's been taken, it's taken a while for these things to sync up, and I noticed that in my HA proxy config from a previous install, I remarked out uh, the Bootstrap server. So let's put that in and put that in. And we'll restart our service. Clear service. HA proxy restart. All right, that should clean that up. Yep, there we go. So now it's fetched the files. Helps when I actually set up the proxy correct. There we go. That looks a lot better. That looks a lot better. Okay, and they're going to pull down um, all their configuration information. Um, they're going to synchronize the, their cluster with uh, the Bootstrap node. There's a lot that they have to download. Again, times will vary. My cluster's a little, uh, I'm sure, and my network's going to be a little bit slower than yours. Um, but uh, these will get all the information. You'll see them uh, reboot once, and then when they come back up, they should be joining the cluster. And at that point, we'll be able to log in with the OC command and uh, monitor the nodes. Once I see the master nodes in there, I'll start firing up these workers. Okay, so our masters are starting to reboot now. So we got uh, master zero, so it should be loaded. 
That's a good sign. There we go. The other two are going. All right, so I'm going to close these windows. And we'll come back over here. I'm going to exit out of there. Clear. Okay, we'll do uh, export. Oh, let me get out of this directory. All right, export could config equals home open shift four point six red cloud off could config. Let's see, get nodes. Nothing yet. All right. <clears throat> and we can watch that. Okay, we see our master is starting to come up now. Let's pull this window up here. I'm going to go ahead and kick off the uh, worker nodes. So, worker zero. Start that one. Worker one. All right. Okay, our masters are now in a ready status. We'll close that. OC get CO. Check the status. Uh, a lot of stuff is still coming up here. All right, I'm going to jump into another terminal window. Pull this over, get that bigger, and then we'll do the same thing here. Let's do um, uh, export could config equals smaller. Okay, that looks good. Watch OC get to CO. And what we're watching for is just all the um, container services, the operators for OpenShift to go true right here in this column. Uh, some of this will not uh, go true because uh, it's going to require the worker nodes. So I'm going to move this screen right here. And then over here, we'll do OC get uh, CSR grep pending and what we're looking for is the worker nodes to come in and they're going to uh, try to join the cluster and they will present a certificate request and we need to approve those and that cycle will happen twice so let's uh, watch OC get CSR grep pending all right, now just wait. We should have three pop in, and then we'll stop, approve those CSRs, uh, and then it will request again, and then we'll approve them a second time. And then uh, our cluster should start coming up. So here we can see that the, there's a couple of pending certificates, and so I'm going to stop uh, this, and then, uh, well, I need to get the certs back uh, so I can paste them in there. So let's put that in there. Yeah, so now we're going to do an OC admin certificate approve and then put those in there. There we go. And then we're going to wait for uh, some additional pending certs. Like I said, it's going to happen a couple of times. So we'll wait to see if we get all of those. Got two of them. Should get, uh, there we go. So let's uh, approve these certificates. There we go, OC, ADM, 
approve, no, certificates, certificates, approve. Then we'll copy and paste those certificates in there. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, enter. Here we go. So now we can uh, look for any other CSRs. There shouldn't be any. There we go. We got everything done. And now the services on the other side here should start to uh, complete as they're, well, the one we're really waiting for is the console so we can get to the UI. Uh, but the rest of the services should start to, uh, or operators should start to um, deploy on the worker nodes now. Now we can check on the status. Looks like everything's starting to come up. So OC get nodes. And sure enough, we can see the three masters and the three worker nodes. And we have no more pending CSRs. So that's good. And like I was saying, um, if you want to pull all the routes because you maybe you don't want to use the wildcard, uh, the star apps, we can run this. And uh, I'll put this in the description below. And then this will pull all the default routes for us. Enter there. And then you can just copy all these and put those in your uh, DNS and it'll be all the default ones. And then for every other entry, you'll just have to manually add it to your DNS for resolution. And the console one is the one that we need right there. It looks like our console is up, so we should be able to log into it. <clears throat> we can also double check it by OC get route namespace openshift dash console. And there's our route right here. Grab that, copy, grab that, copy. And then we'll just put that in a web page. And go to login. Great. Uh, this is it's a self signed search, so that's going to pop up. Advance, accept, advanced, accept. We can log in on kube admin, and then we have to get the kube admin password, which is in the auth directory here. CD auth, and then we want to cat that admin password. There we go. Copy that. Put that in there. Oops. There we go. And now we've logged into our new shiny cluster. And we see we're running 461. We have one uh, storage already provisioned in our VMware for VMware Thin. So that's in there. <clears throat> and now we're really ready for uh, day two operation and configuration. There's a couple of other things we're, we need to do. I'll add those as additional videos here. Uh, but uh, for the most part, we need to let this set for 24 hours uh, to be a nice, healthy cluster. It's going to go through a key exchange after 24 hours. And then we can really dive into uh, those day two kind of things. All right. So that's it for this uh, video. We've installed OpenShift OCP 4.6.1 on VMware 6.7 update 3. Yep. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.